Hey everybody, Mr. Maplog here. This lesson is corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at mrmathblog.com and then make sure you click the integrated math one link. Let's take a look at that. Here's mrmathblog.com and then right here is integrated math one. So if you click that it takes you to all the lessons in integrated math one. And so if you just click these links it's going to be loaded right underneath here. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent congruent figure, sorry. It'll say module 18.3. It'll be going right down there. Okay, so you guys probably already know that there. So here's a shortcut because we're going to say this phrase a lot in this lesson and a lot from now on, you guys. So corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. So we abbreviate that with this acronym CPCFC. So corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. Okay, so that's what this stands for. So that we're going to write that all the time in this lesson and in the next one and from now on. Whenever we're dealing with congruent figures, we just write CPCFC. All right, so our essential question is what can we conclude about two figures that are congruent? Okay, well, recall when we did transformations without dilations. A dilation is like a magnifying glass that makes a figure bigger or smaller. Um, so they're not the same size anymore, so they wouldn't be congruent. But if it is a, a transformation that's not a dilation, like a translation, which means it's, you know, a translation is where it goes over and down or over and up, something, you know, that's a translation. Um, or a reflection over a line or a rotation, those all preserve rigid motion, and that means that the, the image is congruent to its pre-image. Okay, so our title indicates that if two figures are congruent, and this is how we write congruent an equal sign with a little squiggly on top of it that's our symbol for congruent if two figures are, are congruent then all their corresponding parts are congruent so you're probably still thinking what what does that mean well let's just suppose um, uh, we have oops this is a little bit out of uh, sync right there so let's suppose we have triangle ABC congruent to triangle DEF okay well that means that the first letter corresponds with the first letter here the second letter E corresponds with the second letter so B and E and then uh, E and or C and F would correspond so what six congruent segments about the segments and the angles can be written well let's do the the angles first right here okay so uh, it's a, sorry it's got a little sideways right there so um, angle A is congruent to angle D so this is our order when they give you this order of congruency then you have to follow this order if you don't know this order you can't say anything okay and so the second letter corresponds with the second letter here so whatever these triangles are it's not given but if they tell you that these two triangles are congruent then that just automatically means whatever angle A is so is angle D and whatever angle B is so is angle E and same with angle C and F so they're congruent to each other right there all right and then about the segments so if we said the segments right here let me just move that back over right there so the segment so if we did the first and second letter it's going to be congruent to the segment with the first and second letter okay now this says BC so BC is the second and third letter so we got to pick up the second and third letter there so it's going to be congruent to segment EF remember this says this says uh, segment right here BC congruent to segment EF all right this says segment AC well that is the first and last letter of this one so it's going to be congruent to the first and last letter here so segment DF okay just make sure that all the angles and all the sides match up in the order that's given so the order that's given is right up here okay that's important right there all right so let's use that so in the figure triangle ABC is congruent to DEF find the given side lengths or angles okay so this says find the measure remember there when there's nothing on top of that that means it's the measure so find the measure of DE alright so DE is over here it's the first and second letter so it's going to be equal to the first and second letter in the first triangle triangle AB uh, I'm sorry segment AB 
Okay, so let's go over here. So DE is going to be the congruent to segment AB, and segment AB is 2.6 centimeters, so that's what DE is also. Okay, because they say they're congruent, and this is the order right there. All right, this says find the measure, that's what this says, the measure of angle B. Okay, so the measure of angle B is going to equal the measure of angle E. And so if we go over here, here's angle E, it's 65, so so is angle B. Okay, it's also 65, all right? All right, so notice um, uh, this says uh, the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle E. Well, um, if you don't have the little M there for measure, then we just use the congruent symbol. So it's just some notations how we do this. And we say angle B is congruent to angle E, okay? Or the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle E. So if it has an M, it's just an equal sign. If it doesn't have an M, it's a congruent sign. Let's go up here. If it has a segment, then it's a congruent sign. If it doesn't have a segment, it's an equal sign right there, okay? Just synaptics, just rules that we've got to follow on that. Don't get too carried away with that, but um, that's the, what, what your book is going to do also. All right, here it says the triangles shown are congruent. Can we conclude that that uh, JK is congruent to QR? Well, it doesn't tell us the orders there. So although they look like they're congruent, it didn't give us uh, which order the triangles are congruent. So since we don't know the correspondence, between the triangles, we cannot conclude that the segments are congruent. Okay, so no, we can't. All right, so here's another one. So quadrilateral G, H, J, K. This order is going to be the same as this order, L, M, N, P. Find each measure. Okay, so we got these figures right here. It says find L, M. So I automatically go right here, first, second letter. So it's going to be the first and second letter G, H. So it's going to be this piece right here is going to equal this piece right here okay so you got to match up the orders right here and then i highlighted this and uh, the segments in red right there so this segment is the same as this segment that's what this says over here so what i'll do now is subtract 4x from both sides to get 2x over here and add 13 to both sides so 3 plus 13 is 16 so x equals 8 now a lot of kids want to stop right there now remember it says find lm the original question was find lm so we got to take this x and plug it in over here to 6x minus 13 so 6 times 8 minus 13 will get us 35 and always answer it in the context of what it was given it's given in centimeters so it's 35 centimeters okay half the students are just going to write x equal 8 and think that they're done and a good SAT test taker will realize no then that'll be one of the choices on an SAT you got to plug it in to figure out that okay let's do this one the measure of angle H okay where's H H is right here it's the second letter so it's going to equal the measure of angle M right there okay so I highlighted it here's angle H 9y plus 17 and angle M is the 11y minus 1 so we set those equal to each other solve for y now don't forget I said find angle H so we're going to plug in 9 right there so 9 times 9 plus 17 and we're going to get uh, 98 degrees okay all right so here's some properties of congruence and we're going to use these in our upcoming proofs so you're going to get introduced to some cool proofs now don't worry and a lot of kids don't like they say I can't do proofs well just hang in there. Trust yourself. Give yourself a chance. I'm going to try and baby step you through this here. All right, so the reflexive property just says anything equals itself. So segment AB equals segment AB, or sorry, congruent to segment AB. You might have angle C congruent to angle C or something, you know. Anything is congruent to itself, okay? Your teacher is congruent to your teacher. Anything is congruent to itself. The symmetric property just says and they just flip around the equal sign or the congruency sign if a b is congruent to c d then you just flip them around and say segment c d is congruent to segment a d okay you can do it with equals you can do without this the segments on it say the measure of a b is equal to the measure of c d then the measure of c d would equal the measure of, ang of, of segment uh, uh, a d okay transitive property so transitive property kind of goes in a 
and uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh -huh. never mind. If A B, if segment A B is congruent to segment C D, and notice this picks up right here. Segment C D is congruent to segment E F. Well, then I can say that this segment is congruent to this segment. That's what this says right here. That's called the transitive property. So we'll do that, those things, and use those in in proofs. Whoops, I forgot to put a little segment bar up here. So let me do that real quick. Uh, so it says uh, we got this figure right here. Okay, and so here's this figure. I got two triangles right here. Okay, and so the proofs always start off with a given piece of information and I'm just copying and pasting that. They start off with a given piece. So here's congruency. Now, whenever you have congruency, you're always going to use CPCFC. Con corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. So right after we say this, we say CPCFC, okay? And what parts are we going to use? It just depends on the problem. Here it says we're going to prove, it says triangle A. A, B, D. So this left triangle is congruent to triangle A, C, D. And the prove part says prove that this is the midpoint of this segment right here, B, C. Well, if it's the midpoint, that means this side equals this side. Well, since um, uh, this triangle is congruent to this triangle, then that means this piece is congruent to this piece because of C, P, C, F, C. And then once we get this side congruent to this side, then by definition of a midpoint, we can say D has to be the midpoint. All right, let's get started here. Here's our first proof right here, okay? So um, always, always, always our first statement. So we have two columns, you guys, a column for statements and a column for reasons right here. Always our first statement is this given piece of information. And the reason is it's given. OK, so we're going to put that right there. OK, and then the reason is it's given. OK, that's always your first thing. All right. Now, what did I say the next thing to do? The next thing, whenever we have congruent figures, you guys, Right here, we always put as the reason, always, always, always. You get congruency, then we're going to put CPCFC. Now, there might be a case where it's not, you guys, but almost always we're going to use CPCFC. So, so what are we going to say? We're going to say that this side equals this side, okay? So, so I am going to say that BD, notice it's the second and third letter, is congruent to the second and third letter there. And I'm going to say CPCFC right there. Okay, so when we do that, um, now we can say that this side equals this side. So now, since there's only one more thing, our last statement always, always, always in proofs is always the prove statement. So you're going to put this right here for number three. Okay, so number three is uh, D is the midpoint of uh, segment BC right there. And then don't write prove. A lot of kids want to write prove right here. You don't write prove. You say the reason. Why is it the midpoint? Well, since it, it's these two pieces are equal, it's called definition of a midpoint right there. Okay? Now, if you kind of got it, I'm, I'm great. I'm so happy that you kind of got it. If you got it pretty good, I'm way stoked. All right? Proofs are kind of tricky because you just haven't seen them before. So let's try another one, you guys. I just, I want you to buy into it. Give yourself a chance. I know you're struggling with it, you guys. It always happens right here. Okay, so they set us up with this. They told, they gave us all the statements right here, and we got to provide all the reasons over here. Okay, so this is where I usually start my students is I, I set up, here's a picture. Here's some given information, okay, and that's always the first part right here. So this says this quad JKLM is congruent to quad NPQR. That's always given. That's always your first statement. And then it says here's another piece of given information, and that's what this is right here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, now we have congruent figures. What did I say that always happens after congruent figures? The reason always goes right here, CPCFC. Now let's check it out, you guys. Look. K is here, so K is the second letter. It's congruent to the second letter right there, so the angle K is congruent to angle P because CPCFC, corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. Now notice this, this right here is this statement right here. Okay, so let's see, how did we get from, say right here down to here? Look, this says J equals K, 
and then k picks up right there to go to p, so that means j must equal to p. Remember that? That's called that transitive property right there. It always follows this zigzag pattern. j goes to k, and then k picks up right here, and it goes to something else. Then I can say that equals that right there, and that's called the transitive property, okay? All right, okay, now if you're okay with that and you kind of get it, I'm stoked, you guys, and your teacher will be too. They don't expect you to get proofs right off the bat, but you just got to practice. Don't say, I don't get proofs, because I can't help you when you do that. Say, I'm going to try. All right, that's what I tell my students. All right, so here we got two triangles. Here's the order right here. S is equal to S right there. Well, look. This S is um, uh, equal in the bottom triangle and the top triangle right there. Okay, V, uh, this V, so angle V corresponds with angle W, which is this one right here. Okay, and then T corresponds with T right there. We want to prove that ST bisects angle. So ST, so this segment right here is going to bisect angle VS. W. Okay, well if it bisects this angle, somewhere we're going to say this little angle right here equals this little angle. That's how you bisect the angles. All right, let's get started, you guys. Here we go. So we have three statements, okay? So that means we're going to have three reasons. What's the first one right here? Just start thinking about easy points. Right here, we're going to throw the given information here. And since there's three, you always put this, this thing right down here. Man, those are free points, okay? Even if you don't know what to do after that, that's at least what you're going to do. And I'm going to slide this down right here and then look we got congruent parts right here what goes right here always CPCTC what are we gonna say that's congruent well we wanna get this ST bisects the angle ST the segment ST is gonna bisect this angle right here so we wanna say that this angle right here equals this angle right here don't say angle S because angle S has three angles here. There's these two little angles and then the whole angle. So we can't say angle S. We have to say angle V S T. Okay. V S T. Did I say it in that order right there? Yeah, I did. Okay. So notice I went from middle to left to right. So we got to say middle to left to right. So look, here it is. V S T W S T because of corresponding parts of these congruent figures are congruent. Okay, all right, this goes in the last part right here. And then since I have, notice I marked it too, this angle equals this angle. We always mark it when we get congruency right there. So this angle is congruent to this angle. So that means this bisects it because definition of an angle bisector. Okay, you feeling a little better? I hope so. Okay, don't give up. Please don't give up. Okay, here's another one. Okay, so we got quads congruent right there. So they give me that these quads are congruent. That's going to go right there. They give me that uh, segment AD is congruent to segment DC. That's going to go right there. It's given information. And some more free points. I'm going to throw that down right there. Okay, so look. Free points right there, okay? You can't let them go, you guys. you got to put them down. So don't ever leave a proof blank. Always put your given down, and then your last statement is always your proof statement. Your last reason is not prove. Don't put prove right there. Don't do that, okay? All right, now we got congruent figures. What are we going to put right here? C, P, C, F, C. Always just put that there, okay? Now, let's look, you guys. It says segment A, D is congruent to segment C, D. And then down here, our proof statement that says segment AD is congruent to GH. All right, so, so we got to get GH into the picture. Well, let's go up here. Look, GH is the last two letters. It's equal to, hey, the last two letters, which is right there. So let's put CD congruent to GH by CPCFC right there. Now, do you see my Z happening? AD goes to CD, and then CD picks up right there, goes to GH. Look, it's that zigzag pattern right there. So we can say by the transitive property, whoops, let me go back. By the transitive property, look, it goes in that zigzag thing that uh, this guy equals this guy right there. And we put congruency. So segment AD is congruent to segment GH by the transitive property. All right, hang in there, you guys. I know proofs are a little hard, especially since you've first seen them. But don't give up on yourself, you guys. Just keep trying, okay? All right, I'll see you in the next video. And there's your homework if you're in my class.